there is a feeling that China uh, needs to stay grounded and we know that the country face challenges, especially amid the so much global uncertainties. Uh, these all have sent a clear signal of strong uh, determination and uh, confidence to forge ahead into a brighter future. And uh, I think uh, the closing just marks a new beginning in a way. And as you can see, uh, the deputies have come back to their positions. And I think they will understand their efforts in the next five years will just determine how successful China's a modernization drive will be and they'll be looking to uh, put in place those new practical measures to resolve problems while also driving prosperity. Back to you. Thank you very much. Our reporter Feng Yilei at the Great Hall of the People in central Beijing. So, gentlemen, uh, still on President Xi Jinping's keynote a speech, uh, he mentioned that the historic mission of realizing uh, the greater rejuvenation of the Chinese nation is now upon this generation. Uh, Professor Gao, remind us the two strategic steps China will take to realize that goal. I believe one is uh, from right now through 2035 and the other is from uh, that year right into the middle of the century, right? Indeed, I think in the running up to achieving this uh, building China into a socialist, uh, modernized, uh, in all respects, uh, country, uh, we've uh, set two goals. One is from now all the way up to 2035. Now, this goal of 2035 was actually a, re, uh, a new, more recent phenomenon. It was not mentioned back in the 20th century or in the first 10 years of this century. I think it was roughly mentioned about five years ago when China uh, fine-tuned the whole process leading up to achieving what we call the uh, bit centenary goal of around uh, 2049 to 2050. Now, I think this 2035 goal is very important because from now all the way up to 2045, we are talking about a very long process. And I think we need to be more targeted and the goals need to be more tailor-made. Now, from now all the way to 2035, I think we need to really have achieved uh, modernization almost in all relevant effects, and the Chinese people need to achieve a much higher level of uh, wealth for the whole nation and for each individual uh, in their own capacities. Now, this goal should be uh, comprehensive comprehensively achieved in the sense that all regions in China, for example, people in all walks of life and uh, all kinds of industries, etc., need to uh, be further pushed toward a higher level of development or high quality development as has been again and again emphasized in this year's uh, MPC session. Now, from now on to, let's say, 2030, I think it will be more crucial because I truly believe uh, by 2030, the Chinese economy in terms of its size on a national level will uh, surpass that of the United States and will become the largest economy in the world if we still use the official exchange rate as the benchmark. Now, from 2030 to 2035, I think the whole Chinese economy will be further beefed up and it will really demonstrate a lot of new features, especially in terms of science and technology. You can see that the Chinese economy is already on the cutting edge in many respects. For example, in terms of the production of iron and steel, cement, concrete, uh, car making, for example, ship making, etc. And then China is also uh, pushing very much aggressively into, let's say, uh, space technologies, you name it. By 2035, I think China will be very much in the cutting edge almost of all the industries and all subjects of science and technology that we understand, laying a very solid foundation for the final push between 2035 all the way to around 2050. By 2050, I think our future generations in China will really be very proud of Chinese nationals. And when they look at the rest of the world, it is very much integrated because a much larger, a much more impactful China will be more integrated mm. with the rest of the world. In that sense, 
as the Mr. Brown comes from CCG, Center for China and Globalization, China will be increasingly a more forceful pillar and uh, a push for greater forms of globalization. So it's generating huge benefits for mankind as a whole. Let's also put things into a global perspective, Mr. Brahm. President Xi Jinping mentioned multilateralism and China's development should not be looked at independently from the rest of the international community. He mentioned uh, common prosperity and shared value and reform and upgrading the global governance system. Uh, what are your expectations going forward? What kind of role can China play in this regard? Well, you really have now a bifurcated world system. You have increasing protectionism across the world. You have now even sanctions being issued against countries, political uh, unilateralism uh, from one country to another. And what you have now is you're going to have two very different parallel systems operating on this planet. So when we talk about globalization, in the post-COVID era, we have witnessed deglobalization. Now we're going to see a new type of global integration depending on the region. So you're going to have the United States, North America, and some of Europe. Mr. Brahm, uh, let's, let's come back to you later. Sure. Chinese Premier Li Tiang is now uh, taking questions from domestic and foreign journalists. Let's listen in. And this is his first news conference in his capacity as China, the Premier of the State Council. Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media, good morning. The 14th annual China-China Relations Summit just the first session of the 14th National People's Congress just closed. We are privileged to invite Premier of the State Council, Li Qiang, and the Vice Premiers to meet with the press and invite Premier Li to answer your questions. And I'll give the floor to the Premier. Good morning. It, I am happy to meet with the press today. I want to first of all thank you for your hard work in covering the two sessions. We really we thank the party and the people for their trust, and we're deeply aware of the important responsibilities and the glorious mission upon our shoulders. We will follow the strong leadership of the CPC Central Committee with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, rely closely on our people, and faithfully perform the duties entrusted by the Constitution and laws with an enterprising spirit 
and a strong sense of responsibility. We will press ahead with grit, stay honest and upright, exert our utmost, and live up to our mission. I'm now ready to take your questions. Chinese Central Television, first of all, congratulations to you, Mr. Premier, and the four Vice Premiers. The coming five years will be crucial for getting our efforts to build a modern socialist country in all respects off to a good start. People, both at home and abroad, are following closely the work of the new government. So my question is, what are the goals and priorities of the new government? How will the government carry out its work? Thank you for your congratulations, and I also want to thank you for your interest in the work of the new government. The 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China last year laid out a comprehensive and a strategic plan for the country's development in the next five years and beyond. For most of the important issues that are of interest to the people, the 20th Party Congress report has provided clear answers. The task of the new government is to implement and deliver on the important decisions and plans laid out by the party central committee turn the inspiring blueprint drawn up at the 20th Party Congress into an, into an implementation scheme and work with, with our people to step by step turn this blueprint into a beautiful reality. In carrying out our work, we will focus on the following priorities. The first priority is we will firmly establish a people-centered development approach. The ultimate aim of the work of the party and the government is to improve the well-being of the people. As General Secretary Xi Jinping pointed out, people's aspiration for a better life is our goal. We will always bear in mind this is a people's government, and we will make solid efforts <coughs> on every piece of work concerning people's livelihood. 大家更在乎的、更关心的，一定是自己身边的具体事，像住房、就业、收入、教育、医疗、生态环境等等。政府工作就是要贴近老百姓的实际感受。
明有所判，正有所为。Honestly speaking, most people do not keep their eyes on GDP growth all the time. What they care more about are the things that happen in their everyday life, like housing, employment, income, education, medical services, and the environment. Therefore, the government must always plan and carry out its work in light of what the people feel and act according to people's wish. 第二，要集中力量推动高质量发展。大家，大家已经注意到了，这一次，习近平总书记在参加。江苏代表团审议的时候，特别强调，要牢牢把握高质量发展这个首要任务。Second, we will focus our efforts on promoting high-quality development. You may have noticed that when attending the deliberation by the MPC deputies from Jiangsu Province, General Secretary Xi Jinping stressed the importance of focusing on the top priority of high-quality development. 确实，我们国家的经济社会发展啊，已经取得了巨大成就。我们的经济总量现在是稳居世界第二，但是发展不平衡、不充分。我们任何一个总量指标、总量指标要分摊到十四亿这个人口基数上，人均水平还都是比较有限的。Indeed, China has made great progress in economic and social development. We are now the second largest economy in the world. That said, China's development is still imbalanced and inadequate. Any aggregate volume, when divided by the 1.4 billion population, will become a small per capita figure. Now, our development is more than just the problem of whether it is there or not. In the future, we will be more concerned about solving the problem. 好不好问题，特别是如何进一步提高我们的科技创新能力，加快建设现代化市场体系，推动发展方式的绿色转型等等吧。Currently, our development is focused on providing for people's basic needs, and going forward, the focus will be shifted towards delivering a life of better quality for the people. In particular, we will Enhance our capacity in science, technology, and innovation, accelerate the building of a modern market system, and transition toward green development. 总的来讲，我们还是要在三句话上下功夫，完整、准确、全面的贯彻新发展理念，加快构建新发展格局，着力推进高质量发展。All in all, we will make greater efforts to fully and faithfully apply the new development philosophy on all fronts, move faster to create a new pattern for development, and concentrate our efforts on promoting high-quality development. Third priority, we will remain steadfast in deepening reform and opening up. 我们常说，改革开放是决定当代中国命运的关键一招。在下一步推进中国式现代化，在实现第二个百年奋斗目标的历史过程当中，我认为我们还必须吃改革放，走开放路。As we often say. Reform and opening up is a crucial move that has made China what it is today. In the historical process of advancing Chinese modernization and realizing the second centenary goal, we must continue to firmly pursue the path of reform and opening up. We must maintain the social and economic trajectory of the Chinese Communist Party. We must maintain the high-level open-ended development. We must use the reform and opening up as a means to continue to advance China's 增强我们国家发展的动力和活力。We will keep to the direction of socialist market economy reform, promote higher level opening up, and inject stronger vitality into China's development by deepening reform. 谢谢。
Thank you. 请继续提问。请中区第二排左起第三位 CNBC 郑一伦。Thank you from CNBC.、Uh, Premier Li, this year marks the first since the peak of COVID in China, and many expect the economy to rebound in the near term. What policies will China enact to achieve its full-year growth target? What drivers of growth and drags on the economy does China expect in the year ahead and in the next five years? What kinds of policies does China plan to pursue in the next five years to support sustainable, high-quality growth? And finally, how effective have policies been in the last few years in reducing debt, disorderly expansion of capital, and other systemic risks in China? Thank you. 美国消费者新闻与商业频道。今年是中国疫情过封后的第一年，许多人预期经济将在短期内反弹。中国准备采取怎样的措施来实现全年的经济增长目标？中国经济在今年及接下来的五年将面临哪些有利和不利的因素？未来五年，中国计划采取什么样的政策来支持可持续高质量增长？近几年，中国在应对债务、资本无序扩张。等系统性风险方面的政策取得了哪些成效？这位记者朋友，呃，很会抓机会，他这个一口气，我刚才记了一下，是四个问题，六个方面的内容。时间关系，对不起，我只能摘要的做些回答。I see our journalist has really made the most of the opportunity of asking the question. I counted four questions on six subjects. But due to time limit, I can only briefly answer your questions. 确实啊，今年世界经济形势不容乐观，不确定、不稳定、难以预料的因素还很多，而且有时候还会出现一些偶发、偶发的问题。如何稳增长，恐怕不仅是对我们中国，对世界各地都是一个现实的。Indeed, the prospect of the global economy this year is not optimistic. We see many factors of uncertainty and instability, and also unpredictable factors. And sometimes there will also be、um, unexpected incidents. Stabilizing economic growth is a challenging task, not just for China but for all countries in the world. This year, our economy's growth target. 现在定百分之五左右，这是综合考虑了各方面的因素以后确定的。当然，现在我们经济总量大了，我们总量已经过了一百二十万亿，而且现在新的挑战也不少。在这种高基数上，要实行，要达到这么一个百分之五左右的增长目标，恐怕也不是件容易的事，需要我们。This year, we have set the GDP growth target at around 5%, which is based on consideration of various factors. Currently, China's total economic output has already exceeded 120 trillion RMB yuan. We also face quite a number of new challenges. So, to achieve a around 5% growth on such a high base figure is not an easy task, and it would require redoubled efforts. 有关经济发展的一些具体政策部署，实际上在去年召开的中央经济工作会上已经做了全面的部署。As for the specific economic policies, the Central Economic Work Conference last year already laid out a comprehensive plan. 基本取向是坚持稳字单头，稳中取进，要推动。整个经济运行整体向好，经济运行的整体向好。Basically, we will keep to the general principles of prioritizing stability and seeking progress while maintaining stability, and we will push for a turnaround in overall economic performance. 苏维文最重要的还是稳增长、稳物价、稳就业。所谓进。关键就是要在推动高质量发展上有新的进步。
On stability, the emphasis will be placed on ensuring stable growth, stable prices, and stable jobs. On progress, the key will be making progress on high-quality development. 具体工作当中，恐怕有这么几件事是我们下步重点考虑的，或者说要打好这么几套组合拳。As for our specific work going forward, we will introduce a number of policy combinations. First, we will introduce policy combinations, including the following aspects: combination of macro policies, uh, combination policies for expanding demand, both domestic and external demand, and also investment policies for advancing reform and innovation, including institutional innovation, innovation in science, technology, and industrial innovation and also a combination of policies for preventing and diffusing risks. These combinations have a very detailed nature. I won't talk about it. We will continue to improve the situation, to improve the situation, to improve the situation, to improve the situation. These policy combinations will all be supported by concrete implementing steps. Due to the interest of time, I will not elaborate on them, but we will enrich, adjust, and improve these policy combinations in the course of implementation. Our journalists also ask about the drivers and drags on the Chinese economy. Indeed, uh, China's economic development is supported by quite a number of uh, advantages. For example, we have a supersized market which is irreplaceable. We have a well functioning industrial system. We have rich supply of human resources. We have a strong development foundation. But most importantly, we have notable institutional strength. 我们今年中国的困难也会不少，但是静下心想一想，我们哪个时候、哪一年没有碰到困难？我们从来是在不断克服困难当中，实现新的发展，创造新的奇迹的。Talk about drags on the Chinese economy or difficulties. I think all countries are confronted with some difficulties, and we see no less difficulty for China this year. But think about it. Is there any single period or any single year we, we, where we had no difficulty at all? We, uh, the Chinese people, have always been managed to pull through difficult time and achieve new progress and create new mir miracles. Like 小时候啊，听的最多的故事是大禹治水，愚公移山，精卫填海，跨父逐日等等，都很励志，讲的都是不怕困难，不畏艰险，勇于斗争，自强不息的精神。中国人从来没有被任何困难所压倒。People of my generation are familiar with stories of heroes in Chinese legends, like Da Yu, who tamed the flood, Yu Gong, who moved the mountains, Jin Wei, who carried stones to fill up the ocean, and Kua Fu, who chased after the sun. These inspiring stories are testament 
to the spirit of resilience, tenacity, and perseverance that has defined the Chinese nation. We, the Chinese people, have never been crushed by any difficulty. From this year, 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 企稳回升的态势，我看最近一些国际机构也调高了对中国今年经济的预期。As the economic performance in the first two months of this year demonstrates, the Chinese economy is stabilizing and picking up again, and some international organizations have also revised upward their projections for China's economic growth this year. 对中国经济的前景，我想用八个字来概括，叫做“长风破浪，未来可期”。对此，我充满信心。To sum up, I believe the Chinese economy will break wings and waves and sail toward a brighter future. I have full confidence in that. 谢谢。Thank you. 请继续提问。请南区第二排第二位女士提问，谢谢。啊，谢谢李总理，你好，我是来自香港凤凰卫视凤凰网凤凰秀的记者胡玲。呃，这几年其实我们可以看到，香港实现了由乱到治的一个根本性的转折啊，香港稳定下来了。那么其实这个过程当中呢，大家也会说，那么发展问题又摆在了眼前。那么对于香港来说的话，呃。随着整个世界政经局势还有环境的变化，我关注到有评论认为，其实港澳目前的竞争力啊已经被弱化了。我就想请问，您会如何来看待港澳未来的发展前景？另外呢，大家其实非常关注的就是中央政府下一步还会有哪些措施来更好的支持港澳，来发挥自己的优势和特长，实现更好的发展呢？谢谢。Phoenix TV. In recent years, Hong Kong has restored order and stability, marking a major turnaround in the situation. And now, development in Hong Kong has captured the attention of many. But due to changes in international economic and political landscape, some believe that the international competitiveness of Hong Kong and Macau are weakening. So, what is your assessment of the future prospect of Hong Kong and Macau, and how will the central government support Hong Kong and Macau in leveraging their strength and unique features and achieve better development? The central government. 始终高度重视发挥香港、澳门的独特优势和特点。回归以来，在国家的大力支持下，香港的国际金融中心、国际贸易中心、国际航运中心三大中心的地位没有变，而且得到了加强和巩固。澳门作为国际。旅游休闲中心仍然是享誉全球。The central government has all along attached high importance to helping Hong Kong and Macau leveraging their unique strength and position. Since the return of Hong Kong and Macau to the motherland with the support of the country, Hong Kong's position as a global financial, trading, and shipping center has not changed. On the contrary, it has been strengthened and consolidated, and Macau. Has also built itself into a world-renowned tourism and leisure center. 确实，这几年受各种因素影响吧，香港、澳门在发展当中遇到了一些困难，但是我认为这还是暂时的困难，是发展中的困难。It is true that in recent years, due to various factors, both Hong Kong and Macau have experienced some difficulties in their development. But I believe these are temporary difficulties that have arisen in the course of development. The central government will take the most accurate, unbiased approach to the situation. The Prime Minister will fully support Hong Kong and Macau in the development of the country. The Prime Minister will fully support Hong Kong and Macau in the development of the country. 全力支持香港、澳门进一步提升国际竞争力。The central government will fully, faithfully, and resolutely implement the policy of one country, two systems. We will give full support to Hong Kong and Macau in integrating into the country's overall development. 
We will give full support to the two regions in growing their economy and improving people's livelihood. We will give full support to the two regions in further building their global competitiveness. I believe that as a country as a strong alliance, there is a one-two-three system to ensure the power of Hong Kong and the power of Hong Kong will be strengthened and will be strengthened. The future of Hong Kong will be more beautiful. I'm confident with the strong backing of the motherland and the institutional safeguards of the one country, two systems policy, Hong Kong and Macau will only strengthen their position and role, and Hong Kong and Macau will enjoy an even brighter future. Thank you.谢谢新加坡联合早报李总理您好您早年做过温州市委书记那温州市以及您后来任职的浙江省江苏以及上海都是中国民营经济非常发达的地方那您对民营经济有很深的了解想请问您认为中国还需要采取哪些措施提振民
，方针政策是一直是十分明确的。你看，党的十九大，党的二十大，去年底召开的中央经济工作会议，都对此做了强调。Indeed, last year there were some inappropriate discussions about private entrepreneurs, which made them feel frustrated. Uh, but as a matter of fact, the Party Central Committee has clear policies and principles regarding the development of the private economy. Both the 19th and 20th National Congresses and the Central Economic Work Conference last year all reaffirmed these policies and principles. We are our commitment in this regard is unequivocal and steadfast. The second point I want to make is that private entrepreneurs or enterprises will enjoy better environment and a broader space for development. Standing Standing at a new starting point, this government will continue to foster a market-based and law-based business environment in keeping with international standards, treat companies under all types of ownership as equals, protect the property rights of enterprises and the rights and interests of entrepreneurs in accordance with law, and we will create a level playing field for all kinds of market entities, and we'll make further efforts to support private entrepreneurs grow and thrive. 从发展空间来看，我们国家具有超级规模的市场需求。现在还有很多新领域需要大家去开拓，还有很多新赛道需要大家去参与。应该说，各种发展机遇是很多很多的，民营经济一定是大有可为。As for development space, China has a supersized market with huge demand. There are a lot of new sectors and new racing tracks that can be tapped. All this promises great opportunities for private entrepreneurs. The third thing I want to say is that the change of the time is that the great public entrepreneurs must develop new The third point. The new era inspires private entrepreneurs to write their new entrepreneurship stories. This is what I want to say today. You know, the economic development has its external conditions, and it is also important to have a strong human conditioning and a strong conditioning. 民营企业家一定要进一步弘扬优秀企业家精神，坚定信心，再出发。This is a point I particularly want to make on this occasion. As we all know, economic development follows certain economic laws and depends on the conditions available. However, it is even more important to bring out people's initiative. So I do hope that private entrepreneurs will carry forward their entrepreneurial spirit and strengthen confidence as they start their new journey. So at this point, I was thinking that in the last century, in the eighth or ninth century, in my home, in Zhejiang and Jiangsu, the hand of the entrepreneurial economy and the hand of the private sector, the hand of the people who created the four thousand spirit, is. 走遍千山万水，享尽千帆百骑，书遍千言万语，吃尽千辛万苦。Talking about this, I remember that back in the 1980s and 90s, when my hometown Zhejiang Province and the neighboring Jiangsu Province were developing the private economy and township enterprises. 
The local entrepreneurs cultivated a strong pioneering spirit. To reach their goals, they were willing to explore all paths, go through all troubles, try all means, and endure all hardships. 虽然现在我们创业的条件、创业的环境、创业的模式与过去发生了很大的变化，但是当时那种筚路蓝缕、披荆斩棘的创业精神是永远需要的。Although the conditions, environment, and the models of entrepreneurship are vastly different today, this kind of pioneering spirit of clearing obstacles and blazing new trails will always be needed. We, the 要带头营造，尊重企业家，尊重创业者，良好氛围。Government officials at all levels must sincerely care for and support the development of private enterprises, make friends with private entrepreneurs, build clean and cordial relations with them, and take the lead in promoting a culture of respect for pioneers and entrepreneurs. 我相信。在新时代、新征程上，我们广大民营企业家一定会谱写出更加辉煌的新的创业史。I'm confident that in the new era and on their new journey, our private entrepreneurs will continue to write their exciting entrepreneurship stories. 谢谢。Thank you. 请继续提问。请南区。第四排，第四位女士提问，谢谢。总理您好，我是澎湃新闻的记者。网民呢对一些热点民生问题高度关注，请问今年我国就业形势依然严峻，政府将采取哪些措施稳就业呢？去年中国出现了多年未有的人口负增长，这是否意味着人口红利即将消失？今年会不会出台延迟退休政策呢？谢谢。The paper, the netizens are all following closely issues concerning their livelihood. Well, this year, the employment situation is going to remain serious in China. So, what steps will the government take to stabilize employment? And last year, China's population experienced negative growth for the first time in years. Does that mean China's demographic dividend is disappearing? And will the government introduce the policy of postponed retirement this year? I'm very happy to answer the public's questions. I can also say that I'm an old people. Now, if there is time, I will go to the market to see what people are interested in and what advice they have to offer. I'm happy to answer questions raised by the netizens. I would call myself a veteran netizen because when I have time, I also go online quite a lot to see what the netizens are thinking and what suggestions they have for the work of the government. 刚才这位记者实际上是提了三个问题。第一个是就业。我先回答你第一个问题。The journalist actually asked three questions. The first question is on employment. 确实，就业是民生之本，但要解决就业问题，我认为最根本的、根本的一条，还是要靠发展经济。Indeed, employment is the cornerstone of people's livelihood, but ultimately, the solution to job creation lies in economic growth. 下部具体工作当中啊，我们会全面落实就业优先的战略。我们会进一步加大相关的政策支持力度，特别是就业服务、技能培训这方面的政策力度会进一步加大。另外，我们一定会综合施策，扩大和稳定现代就业岗位。还有就是对现在新的一种就业形态，我们既要支持，另外要规范发展。As for the specific steps going forward, we will continue to pursue an employment-first strategy. We will increase government support in terms of employment services and technical training. 
we will take multiple steps to stabilize and expand employment. We will also support and regulate the development of new forms of employment. Chinese I noticed that um, people on the internet uh, care a lot about uh, the employment of college graduates. Um, indeed, this year we expect to see 11.58 million college graduates entering the workforce, which will be a record high. This large number certainly adds pressure to employment, but if we look at it from a development perspective, it could be a good thing, because with so many young people entering the workforce, they can inject energy and vitality into our society. Going forward, we will further expand channels of employment, and in particular, we will help and support young people to realize their personal values through hard work. 刚才你提的第二个问题好像是负增长 Your second question concerns population growth. I've also noticed that um, the negative population growth in China has caused much concern, and some people are worried that um, China's demographic dividend may be disappearing. But I don't think it is that simple. When assessing demographic dividend, we should look at not just the quantity, but also the quality of uh, population. We should not just look at the sheer size of the population, but also look at the scale of high-caliber workforce. Our 人力资源丰富，仍然是我们中国一个巨大优势，或者说显著优势。Now we have close to 900 million working age population, and every year 15 million people join the workforce. A rich supply of human resources remains China's notable strength. 更重要的是，我们国家接受高等教育的人口已经超过两亿四千万。每年新增的劳动力平均受教育的实现年限已经达到十四年。More importantly, we have uh, more than 240 million people with experience in higher education, and the average length of education received by new entrants to the workforce has increased to 14 years. 因此可以说, 我们的 Therefore, China's demographic dividend has not disappeared, and our talent dividend is in the making. The driving force for China's development remains strong and robust. That said, we will conduct careful study on the social problems that, have may, that may be brought by the changes in population and respond with appropriate steps. 
对这件事，我看到晚上也是很关心。我们一定会认真研究、充分论证，在合适的时候稳妥推出。Your third question concerns、uh, postponement policy. I noticed that it is also a quite hot topic on the internet. We will conduct rigorous studies and a thorough analysis to roll out the policy prudently in due course. 谢谢。Thank you. 请继续提问。请中区第四排中间位置，乌兹别克斯坦人民言论报，鲁斯兰。大家好，鲁斯兰金扎耶，纳罗内斯罗尼斯佩布乌兹别克斯坦。My question is,、uh, China kept strict COVID measures in place for over two years, as some people in the world have questioned. Were those measures truly necessary, and what preparation has China made for a potential new wave of COVID? Thank you. Uzbekistan Renmin Yanlun Bao. Internationally, some people have questioned whether, compared to other countries, China has implemented strict measures in place for two years. Is this necessary? To prepare for the next wave of COVID-19, China has made what preparations? The pandemic has been going on for three years. 中国人民在中国共产党的坚强领导下，全国上下同心抗疫，现在已经取得重大决定性胜利。For over three years, under the strong leadership of the Communist Party of China, the Chinese people have united in fighting COVID-19, and now we have achieved major and decisive victory in the battle against the disease. 三年来，我们始终坚持人民至上、生命至上，坚持科学精准防控，因时因势不断的优化调整各种防控措施。For the past three years, we have always put the people and the lives above everything else. We have adopted a well-conceived and targeted control approach. And adjusted and improved our response measures in light of changing conditions. In the pandemic, the 普遍普及，赢得了宝贵时间。At the beginning of the pandemic, when the virus was highly pathogenic, we made timely response、uh, with containment measures for Class A infectious disease. Such an effort helped protect people's life and health, and won us valuable time for the R&D of vaccines and medicines and for the rolling out of vaccination. 后来，随着这个病毒的致病力的减弱。也随着我们国家防控能力的能力的提高，我们又对一系列防控措施进行了优化调整，适时的进行了防控的转断，实行了一类一管。At the later stage, when the virus became less pathogenic, and with the increase in China's capacity for pandemic control. We have improved and adjusted our COVID response measures and achieved a smooth transition in COVID response phase by putting COVID back to the category of Class B infectious disease. In our country, in such a large country, in a large country, in a large country, we only used two months to achieve the quick transition to the COVID-19 pandemic. 较快地恢复了经济社会的正常秩序，这是很了不起的。China is a country with a large population and imbalanced development, yet it only took us less than two months to achieve a smooth transition in COVID response phase and restore normal economic and social order in a relatively short span of time. This is indeed a remarkable achievement. 实践证明。中国的各项疫情防控的各项策略措施是完全正确的，防控的成效是巨大的。
What has happened proves that China's COVID strategies and measures are completely right, and our COVID response has been highly effective. Humanity's battle against the virus is a long-term and historical process. Currently, the risk of virus transmission still exists. So we will continue to follow and study the evolving situation, build up our capacity for early warning and forecast, and we have also made contingency plans for different kinds of scenarios. We will continue to continue we will also strengthen medical and health service systems at all levels and speed up the development of new vaccines and drugs. We have also been engaged in communication and cooperation with the international community to jointly protect the health and well-being of humanity. Thank you. Thank you. Chimpe 正常交流跟往来。请问总理，当在推动两岸经济文化合作交流以及人员的往来方面有何规划？谢谢。United Daily News Group from Taiwan. The mainland says it always respect, care about, and promote the well-being of compatriots in Taiwan. So, with the adjustment and improvement of COVID protocols on the mainland, people on both sides of the straits look forward to the early restoration of normal exchanges. So what measures will the mainland take to promote the economic and cultural exchanges and the personnel travel across the straits? Chinese on both sides of the Taiwan Straits are members of one and the same family. We share an unbreakable bond of blood and kinship. We will continue to promote economic and cultural exchanges and cooperation across the Taiwan Straits on the basis of the One China Principle and the 1992 Consensus. And we also encourage more Taiwan compatriots and businesses to come to the mainland. We hope they will not just be willing to come to the mainland, but also be able to integrate into the local communities and achieve better development. 记者先生说的，早日实现两岸的正常往来，恢复常态化的合作，是我们的共同期盼，更需要我们共同努力。Just as the journalist said, the early restoration of normal exchanges and regular cooperation between the two sides of the Taiwan Straits is our shared aspiration and requires our joint efforts. Thank you. 请继续提问，请中区第二排第三位男士提问，谢谢。谢谢，总理您好，我是人民日报记者。全面建设社会主义现代化国家，最艰巨、最繁重的任务仍然在农村。
，请问总理，本届政府在推进乡村振兴上有哪些考虑？对保障中国粮食安全有哪些举措？谢谢。People's Daily. In building a modern socialist country, the most arduous and complex task is in the countryside. So, what plan does this government have in promoting rural revitalization, and what measures will be taken to ensure China's food security? China is a agricultural state. We now have more than 5 million people living in the villages. We can say that without a modern agricultural state, 社会主义现代化是不全面的。China is a major agricultural country. We now still have close to 500 million people permanently resided in the countryside. So, without the modernization of rural sector and agriculture, socialist modernization will be not complete. 去年底，党中央召开了农村工作会议。习近平总书记在会上发表了重要讲话，专门就。建设农业强国，抓好三农工作，推进乡村振兴，提出了全面的要求。当前我们整个农业农村工作啊，就是要按照中央的要求，把每项工作抓落实。During the Central Rural Work Conference last year, General Secretary Xi Jinping gave an important speech. And made comprehensive instructions on building a strong agricultural country, advancing work relating to agriculture, rural development of farmers, and promoting rural revitalization. So our task is to deliver on the important decisions and instructions made by the Party Central Committee. 就乡村振兴这件事来讲，我看下部要突出或者要关注三个关键词。In promoting rural revitalization, we will focus on the following three keywords. First, is complete. Rural revitalization is not just about developing the economy. I think it is more important to strengthen the rural value, including the value of the economy, the first keyword is comprehensive. Rural revitalization is not just about economic growth. In my view, it is also important to bring out the economic, ecological, social, and cultural values of the countryside. The second key word is characteristic. China is so diverse, with different climates and different regions. Therefore, every country must be unique. 乡村风貌，特别要注意，保护好、传承好地域文化、乡土文化，不能搞成千村一色、千村一面。The second keyword is distinctive features. China is a vast country. Cultures and customs vary from village to village, even though they may be just miles apart. So different localities must. Develop countryside based on local conditions. It is important to protect and preserve the local and rural culture, and also avoid the situation where all villages look the same. The third key word is change. We must use urban change to promote rural revitalization. The village is the core of rural revitalization. We must use urban change to promote rural revitalization. 让农民参与到乡村振兴中来，而且要让农民更多的分享由于改革发展带来的成果。The third key word is reform. We need to deepen reform of the rural sector to provide drivers for rural revitalization. Farmers are the principal actors in rural revitalization. We need to bring out their initiative and let them take part in rural revitalization and sharing the benefits of reform and development. 刚才这位记者还问到粮食安全问题。我们国家已经连续八年年粮食产量超过一点三万亿斤。总体上看，我们的粮食安全是有保障的。The journalist also asked a question about um, food security. 
The total grain output in China has stayed above 650 million metric tons for eight years in a row. So on the whole, food security is well guaranteed in this country. Going forward, we will further increase our grain production capacity by focusing on two key factors, arable land and seeds. Here, I want to say to our farmers, the country supports the farming policy will increase, not decrease. Here, I want to let our farmers' friends know that the government's policy in support of grain production will only increase, not decrease. And we encourage our farmers to produce more grains so as to make sure that the rice bowl of the 1.4 billion Chinese people will always be firmly held in our own hands. Thank you. Please continue. I am from CATV. My question is, the world is witnessing more geopolitical frictions and signs of deglobalization. Meanwhile, China-U.S. relations remain on the serious dream. Although China has been reassuring the world of its commitment to reform and opening up, foreign businesses remain wary and some are considering relocation. Will China adjust its opening up policy? How do you see the current China-U.S. ties? And what are the prospects that the relations might improve? Thank you. 虽然中国一直强调坚定不移地推进改革开放，但外资外企依然难以感到安心，有的开始考虑撤离。请问，中国的对外开放政策会有变化吗？您如何看待当前的中美关系及其改善前景？今年呢是中国改革开放四十五周年，改革开放发展了中国，也影响了世界。This year marks the 45th anniversary of the launch of reform and opening up in China. Reform and opening up have enabled China to develop itself and also made an impact on the whole world. Two from what I learned, most foreign companies are still optimistic about uh, their development prospect in China. Uh, last year, China's utilized foreign investment totaled 189 billion US dollars, which is again a record high, and it is even uh, close to 50 billion US dollars more than three years ago or before the pandemic. And this demonstrates that China remains a popular destination for global investment. 改对外开放是我们国家的基本国策。不管外部形势发生什么变化，我们一定是坚定不移的向前推进。Opening up is a basic state policy for China. No matter how the external situation may evolve, we will stay firmly committed to pursuing this policy. 这里我特别想说一说中国国际进口博览会。这是中国主动向外、向世界开放市场、共享发展机遇的重大举措。Here I want to mention in particular China International Import Expo or CIIE. 
CIIE is a major step taken by China to open its market with the world and share its development opportunities with the world. The CIE has been held uninterrupted for five years in Shanghai. Even during the pandemic, it was still held as scheduled, and I had the honor to attend all the five editions of CIE. If I remember this correctly, last year there were over 2,800 enterprises from 127 countries and regions attending the expo, and the total exhibition space was over 350,000 square meters. The story of CIIE proves that an open big Chinese market promises big opportunities for companies from around the world. This year, we will further expand opening up in alignment with high standard international trade rules. China will only open itself wider to the world. We will provide better environment and services for all. An open China, a China that is in the constant process of development, welcomes investors from all over the world. The journalists also ask about um, China-U.S. relations. And as for the specific issues concerning China-U.S. relations, our foreign minister, foreign minister Qing Gang already elaborated on our position during the press conference a couple of days ago, so I will not go into details. But I want to stress that it is important for us to translate the important consensus reached between President Xi Jinping and President Biden during the meeting last November into actual policies and concrete actions. I know 在美国国内啊，这几年有人在炒作中美两国土沟的论调，有烧还比较热。但我不知道到底有多少人在这种炒作当中真正受益。I know that in recent years, some in the United States have been trumpeting the idea of decoupling with China, and sometimes it could become quite a hot topic on the media. But I wonder how many people can truly benefit from this kind of hype. 据中方统计啊,去年中美的贸易额已经高达近7600亿美元,再创历史新高. According to Chinese statistics, last year, two-way trade between China and the United States totaled 760 billion US dollars, which again set a new record in history. 中美经济，你中有我，我中有你，彼此都从对方的发展当中受益。China and the United States are closely intertwined economically. We have both benefited from the other side's development. 我去年很长时间是在
上海工作，那里有七万多家外资企业，因此我也有很多的机会与包括美资在内的外企的高管接触交流。他们，他们都给我说，看好上海，看好中国。世界应该合作。For most part of last year, I was working in Shanghai, a city、uh, that houses 70,000 foreign companies. So I had a lot of opportunities to talk with the senior managers of multinational corporations, including many American companies. They all told me that they were optimistic about the future of Shanghai and China. They all hoped to see cooperation between all countries in the world. 他们都认为呀、啊，合作才能共赢。They all believe that cooperation is the sure path that will lead to win-win outcomes. 这些都表明，中美可以合作，应该合作，中美合作大有可为。All this demonstrates that China and the United States can and must cooperate, and there are a lot that the two countries can achieve by working together. 唯独打压对谁都没好处。Encirclement and suppression is in no one's interest. 谢谢。Thank you. 请继续提问。请南区第六排第一位男士提问，谢谢。谢谢主持人，总理您好，我是新华社记者。我们都知道，新一届政府面临着艰巨繁重的任务。各方面也都寄予很高的期望，这对政府的履职能力、工作作风都提出了很高的要求。请问新一届政府在加强自身建设方面有哪些考虑？谢谢。新华 News Agency, the new government faces an arduous and complex task, and also high expectations from the people. This has raised new requirements on the governing capacity and the conduct of the government. So, what plan does the new government has in terms of Strengthening government building. 确实啊，如你所说的，新的使命任务对我们这一届政府同志啊，提出了更高的新的要求。我们将以这一次这一轮的机构改革为契机，切实加强政府自身建设，转变职能，提高效能，改进作风。Indeed, the new mission and new task have raised new and higher requirements on the new government team. We will take the new round of state institutional reform as an opportunity to strengthen government building. We will further transform government functions, make the government's work more efficient, and improve the conduct of the government. 下部工作当中，我们会突出抓四件事。第一。大兴调查研究之风，党中央已经就此提出了明确要求，国务院要带头抓好贯彻落实。Going forward, we will focus on the following four priorities.、Um, first, we will promote the practice of research and studies. The Party Central Committee has already made clear requirements on that, and the, Central, the State Council、uh, must take the lead in meeting these requirements. 我长期在地方工作，有一个很深的感受，就是坐在办公室碰到的都是问题，下去调研，看到的全是办法，高手在民间。I have worked in local governments for a long time. My experience is that when you sit in the office, you see lots of problems, but when you reach out to the people, you see all kinds of solutions. After all, the brightest minds are among the people. We will definitely encourage all local officials to go to the local government to investigate, to learn from the people, to learn from the people, to learn from the people, to help the local government to solve more problems in the future. We will encourage government officials at all levels to engage more with the local communities, to know about what the people need, and seek their opinions on the work of the government. They need to learn from the people, take people as their teachers, 
and help the people solve their actual problems. 特别是长期在大机关做办公室的年轻人，要更多的深入基层、新入基层，更多的接地气。In particular, young people working in government ministries should reach out to the people, keep people's needs and interests close to their heart, and be down to earth in their work. 第二个要突出抓的是，就是扎实推进依法行政。政府的所有工作必须要在法律框架内进行，政府的所有行政行为必须于法有据。The second priority is to promote governance in accordance with law. The government must act within the confines of law, and all government conducts must be based on solid legal grounds. 我们会进一步的推进法治政府建设。我们的工作人员要进一步提高用法治思维、法治方式解决问题的能力。We will continue to promote the building of a law-based government, and the public servants need to build up the capacity for applying、uh, the method and the mentality of rule of law in solving real problems. 第三件，我们想要突出抓的是，就是要提高。创造性的执行能力。The third priority is to explore innovative ways in performing our duties. 各级政府、各部门、各位公务人员一定要牢固树立发展意识、服务意识。Government departments at all levels and the civil servants must be conscious of their duty to serve the people and promote the country's development. 特别是我们有关部门在履行审批、监管等职责的时候，不能只踩刹车不踩油门，不能只设路障不设路标，凡事要更多的做应不应该给他办的价值判断，不能简单的做可不可以判的技术判断。In particular, when dealing with matters concerning、uh, administration, regulation, and approval, the relevant government departments should not just slam on the brake, but also hit on the accelerator. They should not just set up roadblocks, but also need to put up road signs. They should make more value judgment and think about whether something shall be done instead of just making a purely technical judgment and decide whether something can be done. 我们坚决反对一切形式主义、官僚主义，要真正做有创造力的执行者。We are firmly opposed to pointless formality and bureaucraticism in all forms, and we must be creative in performing our duties. 第四件我们要突出抓的是，坚决守住廉洁底线。我们将始终以严的标准。严的要求推进廉洁政府建设，对一切腐败行为零容忍。The fourth priority is to uphold the principle of integrity. We will apply stringent standards and requirements in building a clean government, and we will take a zero-tolerance attitude to all acts of corruption. 每一位政府工作人员必须自觉接受监督。真正做到忠诚、干净、当当。All government officials must subject themselves to supervision and truly meet the requirements of being loyal, upright, and responsible. 谢谢大家。Thank you. 今天的提问到此结束。感谢李总理和各位副总理，也感谢大家对。十四届全国人大一次会议的广泛关注和充分报道，总理记者会到此结束，谢谢。好，谢谢。I want to thank Premier Li and the Vice Premiers for attending the press conference. I also want to thank all of you for your attention to an extensive coverage of the first session of the 14th National People's Congress. This is the end of the press conference. Thank you. 好，谢谢，谢谢。
Chinese Premier Li Qiang has uh, just uh, met a press uh, from home and abroad and answered the questions from a wide range of uh, topics. And this is Premier Li Qiang's uh, first press uh, conference in meeting with global media. That's right, and uh, he was sworn into office on Saturday, and now uh, China's new lineup of leaders mm. has rolled out the blueprint for the country's development for the year and the next five years beyond. So now let's get some uh, analysis from our guests here in the studio. Uh, so gentlemen, we've seen the new premier taking questions from home and abroad. We touched on quite a few issues uh, from the uh, goals and priorities of the government to international relations, of course, uh, China's development in relation to the rest of the world. Uh, which item on his list of concern impressed you the most? I think uh, for this uh, debut uh, by the new Premier uh, Li Qiang, uh, it's, a, it's very impressive. I think his down-to-earth pragmatism and realism really uh, gave me uh, very deep impressions. He definitely is well prepared. His uh, answers are, in my view, are impromptu without referring to any written scripts, for example. And then he knows the matters he talked about a great deal. He talked about him his many years as a leader in local governments in Zhejiang province, Jiangsu province, and Shanghai province. And his very extensive ways of interacting with the private businesses and also foreign uh, uh, business owners in Shanghai, in Jiangsu, and in Zhejiang. I think he really is very solid and uh, uh, this bodes well for his premiership of the State Council in the coming five years. And I think uh, uh, while he uh, has been very important in these local governments, this is the first time that Li Qiang uh, 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 premiered uh, in front of the national audience and the global audience. And I think this is the first time when people like me, for example, and many others in China could really listen to what he uh, talked about and observe how he uh, 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 analyzed all these things in great detail. And I think overall it's, uh, it's an A+. Plus. And I think uh, uh, the fact that he talked about all these you know, uh, uh, high quality development, he also talked about the rural development, how to improve the situations involving farmers, and also science and technology, and also how to deal with foreign investments, and the fact that last year foreign direct investment into China broke the record, and China-US trade, despite of all the resistance and headwinds created by Washington, again broke the record. I think he is very confident and is also very cautious in a sense. And I think uh, 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 the whole nation should be very happy that uh, we now have a very solid, very pragmatic, very realistic new premier uh, who will lead the State Council forward in the coming five years. He also is very modest when he talked about the highlights and the top priorities of the State Council. He was emphatic about the fact that most of the major decisions were made last year in October by the uh, 20th Party Congress as well as the comprehensive economic policies adopted by the uh, Central Committee for example and he said that the main job for the State Council is to make sure that the blueprints already laid out would be translated into an action plan mm. and this is exactly what the State Council need to do get things done roll up the sleeves and really get to work. And I think uh, the fact that he also brought up onto the stage the other vice premier uh, means that this is really going to be a collective job. It is a team effort. No one single-handedly can get all the things in the state council done. It really depends on seamless cooperation. Indeed. Teamwork. And Teamwork. now, gentlemen, let's get more observation uh, from the ver very venue of this uh, press conference held by Premier Li Qiang, and let's cross live to our colleague Tian Wei standing by there. Hello, Tian Wei, uh, give us the uh, major takeaway. Pandong, as you can see, journalists here in the press room are uh, get ready to leave and try to run for their assignment uh, for today. Certainly the debut of the Chinese Premier Li Qiang gave people strong impression, as our studio guests earlier indicated. But at the same time, we see a Chinese Premier already prepared 
to his job. Uh, we have seen he's talking about the goals of his job is to uh, implement what the 20th National uh, Congress of the CPC and the Central Economic Work Conference illustrated last year. So the principles are very clear. He also talked about the uh, priorities of uh, the economic growth, which is uh, economic uh, uh, growing stability. Uh, meanwhile, he said it is important for him to address the people's needs, put people at the center, and make people feel happy. He said it's not about necessarily just the GDP numbers. It is about people's jobs, incomes, um, also education, medical care, and so on, housing as well. So you see a Chinese premier, uh, Li Qiang, very well prepared to speak to his constituencies. Meanwhile, he has been talking to them almost directly with his personal commitment and assurances and also from the collective strength of this state council. He talked about uh, assurances to the private entrepreneurs uh, for respect for their entrepreneurial spirit, for uh, possibilities uh, for new uh, racing tracks and sectors for entrepreneurs to grow. He tried to reassure the farmers in China that there will be favorable policies for them to grow grains and try to uh, bring the nation uh, for the goals of uh, food security. He also tried to reassure the netizens in China. He said he is using the internet often and tried to solicit opinions also from online, tried to see what's going on in the minds of the public. He tried to assure the elderly populations in China regarding retirement age. He said the policies will be carefully studied before it is being put out at the right time. He, of course, also uh, tried to assure the foreign investor by using the example of CIIE, uh, China's uh, uh, important uh, event of the year to import uh, uh, goods from all over the world and also talk about uh, his interactions with foreign investors uh, uh, throughout the years, uh, suggesting uh, in the city of Shanghai, for example, he, where he used to work, 70,000 uh, uh, foreign companies have uh, their bases there. So you see a lot of personal commitment and collective commitment from the state council to the constituencies. Meanwhile, he talked about the spirits of this state council, uh, namely quoting Chinese uh, traditional stories and legends suggesting Da Yu taming the water or Yu Gong uh, moving the mountain to say once you have the determination, there are always the way to go. But the way is not just coming uh, without hard efforts. In fact, they talk about what China has. He assured the international community of China's advantages, supersized market, industrial system, human resources and also uh, institutional uh, systems and uh, innovation. He tried to assure, as you can see, throughout the um, almost uh, uh, one hour and a half press conference given by the new premier of China, that China is on its way for further reform and opening up. And China is on its way with confidence to uh, together work with the world to solve the global issues, but at the same time to make better life for the Chinese people. Back to you, Panda. Thank you very much, our colleague Tian Wei at Great Hall of the People. So, gentlemen, let's uh, continue talking about this. Mr. Bram, uh, we noticed uh, that uh, Premier Li Qiang have uh, emphasized his, uh, his commitment, of course, China's commitment uh, to carry on and deepen reform and opening up. What are the major policy signals here for global investors? Well, let's first of all talk about the signal for domestic investors. Right. Uh, Emphasis on the private sector, I think, has been long awaited by the private sector. Since the 1990s in China began its reform and opening, the opening to foreign investment has also been paralleled by enormous push on the private sector, which has really become the backbone of the Chinese economy. If you talk about creativity, if you talk about technology, innovation, all of this is coming from the private sector. You can't plan creativity. And so the the question that we've had for many people has in the post-COVID era, will the private sector receive the same boost as the state sector? And I think his words are really giving people, will give people more confidence in this area. And of course, private sector is in many cases the partner for foreign investment. And so we're looking now at private sector also going out of China 
investing out. And if we look at, for instance, in Qatar, the, you know, the World Cup, the entire infrastructure that was smart, green, and blue with all of the integrative parts of that, many of which are coming from the private sector, even if it's state sector that's driving the larger infrastructure there. This is the kind of investment on the Belt and Road that we're going to be seeing in the future, where China's taking its own experience at having ecological infrastructure and being able to provide that to nations that need to uh, develop themselves. I think right now we see this uh, enormous rapport between Saudi and uh, Iran, and China's been very much behind this peacemaking effort. And this is not only we're talking about you know, global impact on peace, but also on investment, because both nations are going to be transferring their own economies away from entirely fossil fuel-based and in the future, they're going to need to have smart green, green and blue infrastructure as well. And that kind of integration, I think, is where we're going to be seeing the future. We're going to be seeing a future with China, the Middle East, developing nations working together increasingly more as we see more kind of a pushback coming from North America and some European countries, which the premier emphasizes unnecessary collaboration, cooperation, is still in the benefit of everybody. Uh, separation, deglobalization will have its impact for everyone. But I think certainly measures that are being taken, especially on grain production, is also envisioning the need to be able to be self-reliant while evolving relations with alliance countries, countries that have mutual interests as we see in the Belt and Road. Yeah, mm -hmm. certainly some very encouraging signals to the private sector. It could be a shot in the arm for these entrepreneurs waiting uh, for any positive news for their uh, careers going forward. Right. And then my overall impression, uh, Professor Gao, would be that the premier really wants to stay connected to the people. He emphasized priorities for the government, maintaining stability in terms of the creation of jobs, uh, prices, as well as economic growth. Now, and, and he also caught on uh, government officials at different levels to reach out to the people, to get wisdom from the people, and to listen to their voices in formulating government plans uh, from bottom up. So I want to get your overall impression of the press conference. Uh, absolutely. I think uh, uh, Premier Li Keqiang uh, I think uh, Premier Li Qiang uh, quoted what uh, President Xi Jinping said again and again. That is, the aspiration of the people should be the goal of the government. And I think he demonstrated that he really cared about the aspirations of the people. Now, you mentioned, and uh, Mr. Bram also mentioned, the private uh, businesses in China uh, giving, receiving a shot from his very confident uh, speeches. But I would say that after listening very carefully to Premier Li Qiang, I think my long-term dream can be uh, better and sooner realized. That is, you know, I hope eventually the private enterprises, state-owned enterprises and foreign enterprises in China will have complete, completely equal access to resources, land, labor, for example, as well as financial accesses, etc. And there will be no more distinctions as to what kind of equity ownership that mattered. I think consumers should just care whether this company you know, is doing its job in terms of quality, in terms of social responsibility, environmental protection, and also green development, for example. And eventually, a customer should not care about whether this airline is owned by the state-owned enterprise or uh, privately uh, operated. I think the quality of the service, the reliability of the service, and then the company's social responsibility should eventually matter. Rather than everyone is seized upon whether this company itself is privately owned or state-owned. I think eventually, and I'm pretty sure uh, Premier Li Qiang will do a great job in promoting this, there will be completely level playground for all companies in China regardless of their equity structure, equity ownership, regardless of whether they are Chinese companies uh, at home or foreign invested companies. I hope that day will come sooner rather than later and this will really make sure that the Chinese companies will be uh, equally committed to doing their job 
for the Chinese consumer's benefit as well as for the global consumer's benefit. Now, let's also remember that Premier Li Qiang also emphasized the so-called two unswervedly, uh, basically meaning public and private sector uh, should uh, develop in a uh, organic uh, unity uh, fashion. And uh, also uh, touching upon China's uh, population and aging population issue, uh, Mr. Bram uh, Premier Li Qiang said uh, China's demographic dividend has not vanished and he also talked about the nurturing of China's talent dividend. Uh, uh, what do you make of the future policy direction in this particular regard? There's going to be a huge emphasis on technology, particularly in the Greater Bay Area. And again, as we've talked about earlier, reform of the health care system, reform environmental transition to green energy, all of this is technology based. And so uh, he's going to, you know, the Premier is facing a big challenge. You have an enormous number of students graduating from school, enormous amount of youth looking for jobs, so you have to create jobs. And those jobs will be, to a great extent, created in the technology sectors. Now, technology also goes along with finance. It is a finance-dependent uh, industry. And I think he's also emphasized the need to tighten supervision of finance. Uh, you've had situations last year in Henan, Zhengzhou, where you had irregular financial um, problems. And this now needs to be addressed. You also have a deleveraging issue, certain local governments. And of course, you're looking at the Silicon uh, Valley Bank uh, collapse which is a sign that China does not want to see occur within this country. So financial stability seems to be an enormous emphasis on his uh, agenda going forward because that will assure job employment, it will assure the technology opportunities that will create that job employment and in turn those technologies through new innovation that will be the driving force for the actual reforms that uh, are on the agenda right now. So I think this is where he's going to be pushing. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of talent out there. Young Chinese people have a lot of creativity, innovation, and it's about mm. allowing that to foster and grow and giving it the stimulus mm. rather than trying to control it, but to allow it to nurture. And I think Indeed, this is providing opportunities for the what, younger generation and let them contribute to the development you, of the country. Thank you very much, agenda, Mr. Yes. Lawrence Bram and Professor Victor Gao. Thank there. you. And that's it for this special coverage on CGTN on the conclusion of the first session of the 14th National People's Congress and Premier Li Qiang's meeting with the press. Thanks to our guests again, Professor Victor Gao and Mr. Lawrence Branda. I'm Pandong in Beijing. I'm Wang Mengmang, and of course, CGTN will keep you updated on policy implementations and how these policies are being received by the people. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.